Hey everybody, Jerome Maldonado, and I wanted to bring you guys our June housing update. So this one's exciting because most of the things that are happening right now just happened in the last couple of days. And as most of you guys have heard, interest rates are up. How is this going to affect people? Well, that's a good that's a good question. And so when you look back and you think that 30-year fixed mortgages were at about 3.5% a year ago, and now they're hovering at 6% according to Forbes today, um, we're looking at almost double, you know, we're just less than double um, on interest rates. And I look at this historically. And so I know a lot of people look at it based on a year ago, and it does affect us economically based on what we saw a year ago. Um, but I also look at it historically based on where we were a decade ago, how um, real estate was getting purchased, where cap rates were, how our housing was, and what the affordability was of certain homes. Now, in May, believe it or not, the median average listing price for a single family home was up to $447,000. That's the median nationwide. Absolutely absurd because only two years ago, or a little over two years ago, it's been about two years, four months ago, the average median home price was $180,000. A year ago, the average median home price was $380,000. So to sit and look at median home prices being listed at 447 is absolutely unheard of. The growth is absolutely incredible. Um, we've seen a 37% increase in housing prices just over the last 24 months. And so I've been talking about this since 2019, and I know a lot of people, uh, when I talk about this, it didn't really pertain to them at that time, so they kind of discredited it or discounted it because it wasn't affecting them. And what most people do is when they're listening to information, they only take in what's relevant to them today. The only problem with that is what when you're trying to educate people and tell them what's happening today and what's hap going to happen tomorrow, um, they only listen to, um, to what's happening today. So I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about what's going to happen tomorrow. Tomorrow being a year down the road, two years down the road, and my projections as to um, how this is going to affect us, what opportunities are, are going to come to the table, what type of effects this is going to have on the market, and what type of risks investors, home buyers um, are, are in front of right now. And so uh, right now the current interest rates are at 6%, okay, on a 30-year fixed mortgage, 15-year uh, mortgages are at 5.19 and 30-year jumbos are at 5.88% on average and a 5-1 arm adjustable rate mortgages today are at average of 4.8%. So look, ladies and gentlemen, who's this who are these rates going to affect? Well, obviously they're going to affect end buyers. Single-family home buyers are going to be affected by this. Why? Because it's going to price some people out of the market. And so anytime that we see interest rates rise, anytime they go up, for every quarter percent they go up, somebody has to earn over $10,000 more per year in order to qualify for the same exact mortgage. And so when we see more um, interest rates go up, half a percent, three quarters of a percent, which is what we saw this last week. And now the feds are projecting that to really control inflation, we may see up to a 1% increase on interest rates before the end of the year. That's 7% on a 30 year fixed mortgage. That's big because that's a $40,000 variance per year on the average median income that you would have to be able to produce for someone to be able to purchase the exact same home they're purchasing today in just a few months from now. And so, yes, it is going to market people out of uh, being able to purchase certain classes of homes. And the asset class is going to change tremendously. And so how do, we, how do we deal with this moving forward and how is this going to affect us? And so, ladies and gentlemen, I've been talking about a business model that we've been utilizing for years. And I'll tell you. When we're going into this business model of buying, house, buying land and building houses, a lot of what we talk about, I tell people, we're in unprecedented times. We are making more money right now buying land and building houses than we ever have in the last 25 years on single family units than we have ever in our, our professional career. So it can't last make as much as we were making. Now, if you guys listen to how we actually put our projections together, I tell my sales team all the time, I said, don't be selling people on $200,000, $250,000 returns on, their, on single family builds. It's not going to stay. But eighty dollars to $130,000, that's realistic on single family builds for people, for investors and builders that are buying land and building houses, even in a compressed market. So when we were underwriting projects, 
even six months ago, nine months ago, a year ago, we were underwriting them with the worst case scenario. In, we, we were underwriting them for the worst case scenario to be able to go out and account for inflation and for a, depre a compressed market. And so we know that the market is going to compress. And what we're going to see happen is single family median homes are going to be affected first. So that home between $300,000 and $450,000, we're going to see a compression in those homes. We're going to start seeing 10%, 15%, possibly even 20% compressions. In 2008, when we saw the housing market collapse, we saw a compression of 29%. Now, do I think we're going to hit a 29% compression? No way. There's no way because the banks are doing fine right now. Back in 2008, the banks were not affluent. They had, there was a financial crisis that was affecting the central banking system. Today, the central banking system is healthier. Their bottom line and their books are stronger than they ever have been. And so because the banks are smart, because the loans that they've lent it out are going to better, higher credited buyers, the banks are going to be in a good position to be able to leverage capital. Now, does that mean that they're not going to get conservative? No, they're going to get conservative. And so for those of you guys who are investing in commercial real estate or even single family, multifamily, industrial, commercial uh, assets, everybody's going to be affected down the line. And so our biggest variable right now is how conservative will the banks get? How will the banks be underwriting some of these commercial deals? And so like I mentioned to investors, um, business partners, and colleagues yesterday, I was, I was talking about the uh, 2009 and 2010 pickup from the recession. Now, 2009, 2010, we were still in a compressed market for sure. Banks were barely starting to c figure out how they were going to climb out of the hole they had buried themselves in, and they were getting extremely aggressive with borrowers, even borrowers like myself that had never had a late payment or had never had a missed payment. We were, we were getting pressed financially by the banks for underwriting, appraisals, and they were trying to balloon payments because they were trying to retract capital from lenders. And so we were pushed out of banks. And luckily enough, credit unions, ladies and gentlemen, credit unions were the go-to for commercial loans in 2010. And as smart as credit unions were in 2010 to open their doors to commercial lending, somebody else today will be that smart in what we're seeing in the compression of, of assets, lending, and so forth and so on. So the biggest thing is to pay attention to how financial institutions react to the market, how home buyers are affected, how investors are affected, so you know how to position yourself. Because more opportunity is going to come out of this downturn in the economy than any other time in history. Do you know that more wealth will be created in the next five years than any other time in the existence of your professional career because in one downturn you can create more wealth than if you worked 10 solid years consistently running your business so in five years you can do what you do over the course of 10 to 20 years in your career if you just take advantage of what the market is going to bear right now now ladies and gentlemen there's people that got sloppy i've been talking about this for the last three years since 2019 and i said look this reminds me of 2008, the writings on the wall. I've talked about it since 2019. I said, people are making irrational decisions. They're over leveraging assets, assets. So assets become liabilities when they're over leveraged. And so when you over leverage an asset and it becomes a liability, those folks are now tampering, they're playing, those folks are now playing with fire. And so what lands up happening is they land up succumbing to the market circumstances, being that there's going to be more foreclosures and more properties that are going into bank-owned properties, REOs, and uh, we're going to start seeing what's called short sales. So for those of you guys who don't know what a short sale is, it's when, it's when the borrower goes to the lender because they're short on being able to purchase the asset and they don't have enough capital to continue paying their mortgage. So what the lender does is instead of foreclosing on it, they say, you know what, let's make an attempt to sell this property short of what you owe. Now, there's a spread variance. The spread variance is what the borrower has paid in interest over the course of the duration of their loan. So if they've been paying on that loan for five years and they've been paying interest on it, and if the lender has made a profit on that interest, and they say, okay, we're gonna discount the principal that you owe by by 30% in order to sell this asset, but we've made 40%, so we're still, we still are in, at a 10% uh, positive acquisition with your, with your loan by doing this. And so they still try to collect that debt from the, from the borrower, 
but they essentially sell off that asset at a discounted price. And so we as buyers can come in and pick up an asset for theoretically speaking, a 30% discount from what it's selling in today's current market. And so there's opportunity with short sales. There's also opportunity with foreclosures in the same regards, because what happens is they take that asset back and then whatever that asset is, is owed on that asset, they try to collect. Now, they try to sell that asset off for fair market value. Now, what is fair market value? That's the big question mark. And fair market value is what that asset is worth to the open market, but a lot of times these assets are distressed physically. We already know they're financially distressed. So you add a financially distressed asset to a physically distressed asset, and what lands up happening is the bank lands up having to sell that asset below market value to overcompensate for the distressed asset and its physical distressed asset value because some other buyer has to come in and fix those physical distressed points on that asset, whether it's residential, commercial, and then they can put that house back on the market or they can live in it or they can lease it or whatever that asset class is. And so ladies and gentlemen, to make a long story short, we're sitting in, at, the, at the early infancy stages of a recessionary market where opportunity is on the brinks. This is what happened in 2008 with uh, foreclosures. We were able to go into Phoenix. We were able to go into Nevada. We were able to go into Florida. We were able to go in um, to certain parts and sectors of all over the, the country. But New York, Florida, Nevada, California, and Arizona were the five markets that were really affected the worst in 2008. And we were able to go in and pick up real estate for pennies on the dollar, literally pennies on the dollar. And so what's going to happen this time is I don't believe that Arizona is going to be in that mix this year. I don't believe that Florida is going to be in that mix this year. I believe that California can be in that mix this year. And I believe that there's going to be a lot of other markets that are going to be hit hard. We'll see which markets trend to be the five markets that get hit the hardest and my recommendation to all investors that are watching this right now is to go into those markets and start buying real estate because like anything there's going to be a rebound and in that rebound it's great to buy on the downturn great to buy discounted and just ride that wave up and profit from it and what you do right now is what's going to position yourself to where you are in 10 years from now so ladies and gentlemen don't freak out with the interest rates look underwrite wisely when you underwrite assuming a compression and you account for higher interest rates, meaning that cap rates, those of you commercial investors, cap rates, the percentage that you make when you purchase an asset based on its cash flow and what your net is, is the cap rate on any asset. And so when you go in and you purchase assets today, make sure you're underwriting them at a minimum of a 7% cap rate. If you can't get a 7% cap rate, don't buy it. What that means for you investors that are trying to hold and then and then sell is that you're going to have to take you're going to have to take a discounted price to sell or refinance your asset right now. For those of you guys who are over leveraged and can't, the opportunity will come to those of us who haven't over leveraged ourselves and they're are waiting for the market to bear what's been on the horizon for the last three years to be able to pick up the pieces, help rebuild, and be able to pick up your assets at discounted prices. Now. Don't hate us for picking up the pieces. Just learn from the mistakes of the underwriting that those of us who got uh, wasteful did and didn't take advantage of it. What I did in 2008 is I, I was over leveraged. I also was affected by the recession. But on the flip side, I was able to take advantage of the climb up as well. And so I was able to offset my losses by increasing my wins. And so I st my wins still outweighed my losses. So ladies and gentlemen, even if you're on the losing end right now, don't panic. There's going to be even opportunity for you. Don't feel like you're, 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 going to be, you're going to have to succumb to the circumstances of the market. Just understand that you'll also have opportunities. Your opportunities might, um, be over, might be overweighed by some of your distressed assets temporarily, but you will soon over leverage. You will soon position yourself to have more wins than losses and just continue to ride the wave up. Ladies and gentlemen, the housing market is real. This is what we've been talking about. This is what we've been waiting for. This is no new news. It's just really happening and it's now at the forefront of our fingertips and it's time for us to pick up the pieces and it's time for us to start generating some earnings. Ladies and gentlemen, let's take advantage of this, of this downturn market and let's profit from it. This is the best time historically to get wealthy.
Click below, watch continued footage of what we're talking about in regards to interest rates, inflation, and mortgage rates and housing market. And I look forward to seeing you next time.